I'd like to really test how you guys interact with the world and in particular what you look at. And to do this, Giles has brought with him an unusual pair of specs, eye tracking glasses. These record every tiny movement our volunteers' eyes make as they scan the environment. And so track precisely what they're looking at. So I want you guys to, to put this on, wander around where your eyes will naturally actually go, OK? And for, for, for the 10 minutes, then we'll be able to see. Giles asks everyone to take exactly the same route around the fun park. But he doesn't tell them the real goal of the experiment. All around them, they see rides, boards of people, and of course, food. Loads of food. And to up the ante, Giles has added some extra snack vendors and food sites. The experiment's over and the data is extracted from the glasses. Giles analyzes the results to see if there's a difference between what each dieting group looked at. So Giles, put us out of our misery. What, what was that all about? What are the results? As I understand, you guys had eaten already, so you shouldn't have been hungry. <laughs> the, the, the important and interesting thing that we actually found was that the constant cravers as a group, okay, and that's uh, Danielle, and in particular, actually, Mo, you guys spent a, a, a whole lot of vast amounts of your time looking at food, and not just the quantity of food, but in the variety of food. We can keep on living like this. Mo and Danielle's eye tracking data reveals exactly what they focused on. Without any instruction from Giles, Mo alone clocked a total of 16 hits on food. Despite the dieters from the other groups having their own issues with food, they averaged just six glances each. In fact, the constant cravers were drawn to double the number of food items compared with everyone else. And remember, none of them knew what Giles was looking for in the experiment. It's confirmation that Mo and the constant cravers see the world differently. Did you know you were doing that, Mo? Yes. S surprising, like, because I say I wasn't, I wasn't hungry at all. And then as you're going around these hot dogs and this ice cream and these, these crisps and people stuffing the faces full of chips and burgers, etc., and, you, and you're just looking at everything. OK, so it seems like so far so good. The, the test we did at the fun fair seems to back up what we know about people like constant cravers. But, but why? What's, what's going on? What is happening um, with the constant cravers is you have a higher number of, uh, uh, of these risk genes, um, hungry genes, okay, and what happens is you are hungrier than other, than other people. You may be 5% hungrier than the, than, the, than the person next to you, but that 5% hunger adds up over, over your lifetime. It actually, it actually adds up. And so it is part of your brain controlling the food intake, and your brain um, is feeling hungry all the time. 